Hello, welcome back to another Simplement overview video of the data director. We just finished going through the hierarchy projector with configuration and the explorer. Now we're going to look at the domain instantiator, which is another nice tool you can use. For those who are unfamiliar with the concept of domains in SAP, basically there are certain columns and a wide range of SAP tables that have explicit values that are stored in what SAP calls domains, and, and these values have explicit meanings associated with them. And I'll, I'll use an example to show what that means because it doesn't make much sense to just talk about it. Let's get an example of an actual SAP domain column. Uh, so that we can see what I was talking about. To do that, I'm going to use the Dictionary Explorer, because if you recall in uh, the video that focused on the Dictionary Explorer, I talked about how you can look at individual column properties, and that's how we can determine if a column has domain values or just regular values. So I happen to know ahead of time a good example of a true domain column in the VBAK table, but oftentimes you are not going to know until you actually see data returning from one of these tables, whether it's a domain column or not. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to assume that you know that you know there's some certain domain column that you need to know what those values mean. So in this case, in VBAK, I'm going to use this VBTYP column. And if I right click on it, go to properties, we'll see it tells me here its domain name is VBTYP. And we want to make note of that because we're going to go back to the domain instantiator tool and we're going to use that in a moment. And just a quick note to keep in mind when you're looking at these columns. In this case, the domain name happens to be the same as the column name. That is not always the case, though. So when you're searching for a domain, you need to search for this value that it shows you here in the column properties. So that's just something important to keep in mind. Before I go find that domain in the Domain Instantiator tool, though, I'm going to do a quick query to show what, what, what a domain column actually looks like and why you want to know what those values are. So I have this query here. It just does a select distinct VBTYP from the VBAK table. And you can see here, here's in my demo system at least, here's the results. There's 11 distinct values for document category. But you can see here they're just random capital letters, you know, sometimes there'll be things like lowercase letters or numbers, but I have no idea, you know, what is a K category, what is a W category, what is an A, and this is because they're domain values, and SAP stores these internally, they're not stored in any table, so if I go back to the Dictionary Explorer, actually, there's, there's no parent relationship from VBTYP, I can't go find a lookup table because there is no lookup table, it's a domain value. So that's why I need this domain instantiator. Now we can actually open the domain instantiator table because we know the name of the domain and we saw the real example of why we want to know what those values are. So remember in the Dictionary Explorer we saw the domain, domain name was VBTYP, so I'm just going to put that here. We'll see it's actually returning a lot of different values, and this is why the domain name that it shows in Dictionary Explorer is important. We want to select this one, the SD document category. So we can see here now that I have it selected, it's actually already, you know, showing us what some of these values are. So you know, before, if we were calling the SQL query, it just said A. But I had no idea what an A is. Now I can see it's an inquiry. B is a quotation. C is an order. D is an item proposal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If I scroll down, there's actually apparently 63 distinct domain values, and you can see here some of them are just random symbols and lowercase letters and numbers. Just like the other tools, though, I don't just want to sit here and you know browse them. I want to actually be able to use them, query them, build reports and downstream processes using this information. So this tool will automatically let you do that. You can see here we have the option to create a table or create a view. What that is going to do is in your Liberator target database it's going to spit out a table or view depending on what you choose in this DINT schema which stands for domain instantiation and it'll give it a default name for uh, data domain and then the, the name in this case VBTYP. You can change that name if you want though. Normally I'd recommend just leaving it default so that you can match the generated object to the actual domain it's coming from. So I'm going to create a table, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Generate Object, and then I'll switch to SQL, and we'll see how we can actually query that real quick. 
Oh, with the database object generated, I'm now going to switch back to SQL and I'll show that we can query from it real quick. So I already have this set up, it's just a simple select star from, which we'll recall from the previous screen, that was the schema and the name that I let it create. I'll just press S5 to e F5, not S5, to execute. We can see here, like we saw earlier, there's 63 rows and it has both the domain values and the descriptions. It's not sorted in any particular order, but that doesn't matter. And then if we wanted, I'm not going to do this uh, for the sake of time, but now you know we can go back to VBAK or whatever table and domain we happen to be working with and join in this generated object with the base SAP table. So now you know if you have some downstream sales report, we can know what these different document categories actually are. So now that pretty much covers all the basics of the domain instantiator. Uh, this was just one particular domain, but it works for all domains in your SAP system. Thank you for watching, and we'll continue on to some of the other tools in the other videos.